Listen to me. I want you to understand something beautiful in this picture. The Magi knew that they were sinners and that they needed a savior too. And they brought gifts that reflected their beliefs about who he was. So then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and make a careful search for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. And after they had heard the king, they went on their way and the star they had seen in the east went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And when they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. So I have three quick questions that I'm going to answer, and then we'll close this message. But I think it's important we understand some things. The first question I have is, who were these magi? Well, the Bible's very clear. It says they came from the east. So if you go to Jerusalem or to Bethlehem, Bethlehem is just a few miles south of Jerusalem, literally just almost connecting towns. And so if you go due east from Bethlehem, the first uh, major country that you would come to, and I know some of you are thinking Jordan, but you have to think way back. So what you would come to is actually Babylon. And so when they came into Babylon, you may remember, where did these magi come from? Probably came from Babylon. We know that the book of Daniel tells us that Daniel led the magi in Babylon. And so the question is, how, how, did they, uh, how did they get to Babylon? How did they hear the story so many miles away? How did they know to look for him? Well, you may remember uh, the children of Israel had sinned against God, and they began to serve other gods, and they were worshiping stones and sticks and things that weren't, were never meant to be worshipped. And so God decided that he was going to judge them for their, for their lack of worshiping the one true God himself. And so The Bible says he sent a king from Babylon, his name was Nebuchadnezzar, to come against the children of Israel and he to literally to enslave them. And so he led the children of Israel away into captivity for 70 years. They were in captivity, 550 years before before Jesus comes on the scene. They were living in captivity in Babylon and there were people, there were young men, there were good looking young men many of them from the king's household, from the king's family. I believe that Daniel was probably one of those who was from the, king, uh, was from the king's family, from literally generational, from generation to generation, from King David to Daniel. And Daniel knew to be looking for the Messiah. Think about this. 750 years prior, Isaiah said, this is who, how you'll know who he is. 200 years later and 550 years before Jesus comes on the scene, Daniel is in Babylon and the Bible tells us that Daniel interpreted dreams for Nebuchadnezzar and Nebuchadnezzar put him in charge of all the land and specifically he was in charge of all the magi that were in Babylon. And so can you hear it? Daniel sits down with them to train them and to teach them in the ways and know know the the amazing things of God. And he tells them one day, boys, I don't know when it's going to be, but one day the Messiah is going to come. And when he comes, there's a way that you will know that it's him and you will see his star. And when you see his star, the Messiah has been born. Go and find him, take him gifts, take him treasures. Daniel is explaining all of these things. So this answers the second question. How did they know to look for the Messiah? I believe that Daniel sat down with them and he taught them all of these things and said, one day, by the way, just think about this. Who are the Magi? The Magi weren't Jews. The Magi were Gentiles. Here's what you need to know. Pretty sure, could be wrong, but probably most every person in this room, we're all Gentiles. You know who came to worship Jesus first? Gentiles. Not the Jews, Gentiles came to worship him first. Here's the great news. Today, you're not here by accident because we're here to worship a King of Kings and the Lord of Lords as Gentiles. I actually, you know, I say there's no one Jewish in the room. I actually did that DNA thing. Anyone ever done the DNA thing? Everyone done the DNA? I did the DNA thing and it came back that I had a very, very, like half a percent of Jewish blood in me. I might have lost it. I fell down and bled my knee one time, so I'm not sure. (laughs) It's really small. But mostly I'm a Gentile. And here's the thing, we should be taking the lead in leading the rest of the world to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And so, who were they? They were Gentiles led by Daniel. 
Here's the last question I have, and that is, why did they bring gifts? Why did they bring gifts? The Bible tells us that they brought gold, they brought frankincense, and they brought myrrh. Why did they bring gifts to Jesus? Well, first of all, it was expected. Uh, If you were going to go before a king of any land, you were always expected to bring a gift. Uh, Even to this day, if some of you are ever invited to go to Buckingham Palace, I'm guessing the odds are pretty small. Maybe one to 10 to the 17th power, I don't know. But, but if you're ever invited to go to Buckingham Palace, one of the things that's an expectation is that you would bring the king a gift. And so these magi who came from the east, there's an expectation on them that they would bring the king a gift. Just think about that for a moment. The magi knew that Jesus would be a king one day. They brought him gifts. That's a pretty powerful thought. But then if you think about the gifts themselves, the Bible says that they brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. Gold was a gift that was meant for a king. Only kings were presented with gold in this fashion. You, would, you don't give away gold unless you're giving it to the king. And so they, they came to the king and they presented him with gold. Frankincense was a gift that you would give to a priest. Now I want you to think about that for a minute because never in history before you would have kings and you would have priests, but you didn't have a king and a priest. Jesus came both as king and priest. What did priests do? Priests always offered sacrifice. It was them who took the lamb and they slaughtered the lamb for the, to take away the sins of the world. Jesus came not only as king, but he also came acting as priest so that one day he could take away the sins of the world. So frankincense was a gift that you would bring to a priest. The last one was myrrh. And myrrh was a gift that you would bring to someone who had died. These wise men, these magi, these Gentiles, knew that he was king and priest and that one day he would die. Well, we know the rest of the story. Jesus did go to the cross and he did die for men's sins. The Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift, but the gift, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Listen to me. I want you to understand something beautiful in this picture, that the Magi knew that they were sinners and that they needed a Savior too. And they brought gifts that reflected their beliefs about who he was. So tomorrow morning when you get up and you bring gifts to one another, I want you to be reminded that the greatest gift that's ever been given to us was the gift of a Savior. His name is Jesus. Why did they bring gifts? The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever would believe in him, they would not perish, but have everlasting life. Yes, it's very true. I started this message by saying there's none righteous, not even one that we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of the glory of God. But the greatest news of all is that the Bible tells us in Romans 10 that if we confess with our mouths the Lord Jesus and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead, we shall be saved.